Chapter 13 Immediately, Dismay shoved his muzzle into the opening Declaration had made. His whole body quivered with delight. New people! New people! His tail paddled the late summer air. Get away, dog! squealed Kristen. I'll stay in the car, cried Tiffany. Comfort! yelled Declaration. Call off your dog! Before I could say anything, Daddy called to Dismay, and he bounded to Daddy. Happy, happy, happy! For any attention. Declaration, Kristen, and Tiffany climbed out of the car and faced me. Kristen was wearing a pink short set. Tiffany wore a yellow short set. Declaration short set was light blue. Gone were the declarations Declaration always wore. Gone were the gloves, the hat. She didn't look like Declaration at all. She looked like a Kristen Tiffany Declaration triplet in matching angle socks and ponytails. I couldn't think of a thing to say. Nice pajamas, said Tiffany. Kristen giggled. Declaration looked at me and sighed. I licked my lips. The silence itched like a mosquito bite. Finally, Declaration spoke in an uneasy voice. Jennifer's having a birthday party. We're going bowling, said Tiffany in a bright voice, as if going bowling meant flying to the moon. Declaration's daddy is driving us, Kristen yipped. I loved birthday parties. It'll only take me a minute to get dressed, I offered. I didn't even like Jennifer. I didn't have a short set, but if they'd come all the way to Snowburgers to get me... Kristen and Tiffany looked stunned. I felt my face on fire with embarrassment. What? Comfort, said Declaration, looking at the other girls and then back at me. Kristen and Tiffany were watching Declaration, and I could tell she knew it. Kristen and I spent the night at Tiffany's house last night. Kristen and Tiffany smiled at me. Declaration continued. Daddy picked us up for the party. We stopped by so Daddy could drop off the paper. What time is the party? I interrupted. Maybe Daddy can run me over to the bowling alley if you want to go on ahead before I get dressed. Kristen and Tiffany had entwined their arms. They studied the asphalt at their feet. It's at ten o'clock, said Declaration. But, comfort, that meant I could stay away from Peach all morning. Of course, I'll have to ask Mama if I can go. Tiffany put her hand over her mouth and stifled a giggle. Declaration looked at me wide-eyed, and I stared back at her in a helpless way. Comfort, said Declaration from between clenched teeth. She gave her head a tiny, tight shake. Tiffany spoke next. Don't you have an obituary to write or something? My heart began a wild beat in my chest. No one at school knew about my life notices but Declaration. My heart was thumping so hard I could barely breathe. I didn't know how to turn around or how to leave. I stared at the air in front of me. Declaration was suddenly at my elbow. She stood with her back to Tiffany and Kristen. You can't go to a party on a family funeral day, Comfort. She used one finger to touch my arm. I'll tell you all about it later. I blinked. Everything moved in slow motion. Yes, I said. I mean, no, that's right. In that moment, a tinny, puny, scrawny voice called to me from the direction of the funeral home. Comfort! Time came back to me. Peach was running in my direction, waving his skinny arms in the air, his head bobbing on his thin-as-a-noodle neck as he ran. His whole body careened, first right, then left. He was like a bony little bird flapping out of control. What is that? said Kristen. What's wrong with him? asked Tiffany. Declaration put her hands on her hips. Peach stopped in front of her and swallowed. He tried to talk, but he was out of breath from that crazy running, so he just stood there, making great gulping sounds with fish-like lips, trying to get his breath back. What is he? Slow? asked Kristen. No, I said. Tiffany giggled and said, he sure is neat. Now Peach didn't act orderly, but he was the most orderly looking person you would ever want to meet. Every single day, he looked like he had just walked out of Sunday school. Every thin yellow hair on his pin head was perfectly cut and licked to a gloss. He wore a white button-down shirt and long brown pants with shiny brown shoes. He was scrubbed so clean, his pale skin seemed to glow. "'I'm sorry, Comfort,' said Peach in his sandpaper screech. "'I'm sorry to surprise you so bad. Mama says you are grieving, too.' "'Get away, little boy,' said Kristen, waving her hand like she was shooing a fly. "'Leave him alone,' I said, 
surprising myself. Declaration, who was looking past Peach, said, Here comes dismay! Like a shot, she was back in the car. Get in! Kristen and Tiffany screamed at the sight of Dismay racing for the car, his mouth open and his tongue flopping everywhere. Behind Dismay was Mr. Johnson, smiling and making for the car with a brisk step. Dismay, he called. Dismay turned in mid-gallop and ran back to Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson stopped to rub Dismay all over. It made him smile even wider. You are a feel-good dog, he said. To me, he said, we'll see you at one comfort. I'm coming early to help your daddy. Yes, sir, I said. Yes, sir, said Peach. Mr. Johnson gave Peach a pat on his slicked up hair and climbed into his car. I turned on my bare heel and stalked back to the house. Peach was right behind me, flapping in his goony bird way and out of breath. Comfort, he called. Mama says you need a hug. I walked faster. I heard the big tires of Mr. Johnson's car roll over the pebbled entrance to the driveway and turn onto the road, away from us, toward town. I ran for the back door of the funeral home. Comfort, Peach implored. I've come to see you. I opened the back door and faced my zigzagging cousin. Get lost, I shouted. I slammed the door in his face. I scaled the back stairs two at a time.